Dr. Campbell, it's, it's an honour to meet you. I've never met a Nobel Prize winner before. Just tell us a little bit about your history because you're from Rapmelton. Yes, I grew up in Rapmelton and um, was educated in Ireland, in Belfast and in Dublin, and then went to America on an exchange programme, uh, not intending to stay there, and in fact did come back to Ireland. Um, but already had an invitation to return to complete my graduate studies in America. And so I went back, but this time I stayed there. And you're famous for your discovery, which uh, obviously awarded you the Nobel Prize. Can you just tell me about that? It's, it's to cure river blindness, isn't it? Yes, it is a discovery for a treatment to prevent river blindness which is very important, but the most important thing to say initially in terms of what had been my discovery is that it's actually the discovery of a team of people and uh, people get tired of hearing me say that, but in this case it's extremely important because uh, the Nobel Prize um, really, if it could be given to a group, it would be given to the whole team, but unfortunately it cannot be given to a group. Uh, the prize in medicine, and so it's, it's not given to the group. But I just want to clarify that that it really was a team effort. And you invented the medicine that cures the parasite. Am I right in that? Well, actually, it doesn't cure it. It prevents the disease. Um, and it turns out that that is very important because the treatment is so simple, so extremely simple and safe, that it can be given on a community basis and it can be given once a year or twice a year, which makes a huge difference. And so you can treat school children, the young people, and if they get the pill once a year, they will never develop the disease. So they will not live at the, under the threat of blindness for the rest of their lives. This is something that we don't know about here in Ireland because you don't hear of people getting river blindness here. But how many people would have been affected by river blindness before this discovery? Well, annually there were at least 35 million. Um, nobody really knew uh, quite how, the exact number, of course, because they're scattered all over central sub-Sahara Africa and a little bit in the Middle East and in Central America and South America. And so they were scattered, so there were millions of people, certainly, who had it, yes. And tell me, did you have any idea that you were going to win the Nobel Prize? No, I had no idea at all. Um, it, the disease, I mean, the treatment had a big impact, but again, it didn't seem that there could be a Nobel Prize, and I certainly was not expecting it, and I was really shocked to get the phone call. And in fact, I didn't believe it when I got the phone call. It, came early in the morning and I said to the guy, are you kidding? And he told me how to go online and verify that this was <laughs> a genuine thing. And then right after that, I got the official call from the Nobel Foundation in Stockholm. And it's the only time ever anyone has ever won a, a Nobel Prize for medicine. So you're the only person in the world. And the only person in Ireland. Oh, in the only, Ireland. The only Irish person. The only oh, Irish right, person. Right. <laughs> well, that's, that is some achievement. <laughs> so you win a big medal. What's yes. it like? Well, the medal itself is fantastic. I mean, it's a solid gold medal, so it's very, very special. Um, but the meaning, what's behind it, is of course more important. Of course. And the other thing that was exciting is what goes immediately with the medical, uh, with the medal, which is a trip, first of all, to the White House to visit the president in the Oval Office, um, and that was quite exciting. My wife and I did that, and he gave me a little present, which was unusual because of certain work that I'd done that he had heard about. Um, and then to go to Stockholm, where it's just a real fairy tale experience for my wife and me. Um, I mean, a real incredible week-long event, eight days in fact, um, of banquets, royal banquets, Nobel banquets, um, all kinds of things, meeting the king and queen, having a little time, just the two of us with the king and the queen, um, sitting next to a princess <laughs> at dinner time. <laughs> I mean, it's just and fantastic concerts and things like that. Well, it is a great honour to have you here in Sligo today and a privilege to meet yeah. you. Thank you very much for talking well, to us today, Dr. You know, Campbell. The pleasure and the privilege are both mine. Thank you very much. <laughs>